So welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Growing Food course here on Last Ditch. We're going to talk about soil, plants, and tools. So in terms of soil, I'm not going to delve too far into the totally fascinating world of soil science because you should definitely learn as much as you can about soil. But for our purposes here today, we can easily get lost in the weeds and I'm going to try to break it down as simply as I can. So I would really just suggest that no matter what you're gardening with, whether that's containers or an existing patch of ground or a huge acreage, um, I would just suggest that you start by getting some potting soil from your neighborhood garden center. Um, if you need a lot more, that's great, but we've already talked about trying to start small. Um, you can ask the people at the garden center uh, which type of soil you should get for what you want to grow. But usually, if you see a bag with pictures of vegetables on it, that's a good start. You're probably on the right path. I'm not being funny here. Um, often they, you'll see soil with pictures of grass. That's usually a top soil that's for growing grass in. You're much better to go with a, a really rich potting soil that has some fertilizer in it already. So I would just get a regular potting soil to start. It should say potting soil on the bag or again, have a picture of some vegetables on it. Um, if you buy a different type of soil or you buy just manure, mulch, or topsoil, you'll, your veggies likely aren't going to grow well, if at all. So soil does matter, um, but we don't need to overthink it too much, just get a regular potting soil. This is where it's probably helpful to distinguish between dirt and soil. So you can think of dirt as soil after all the nutrients have been used up by plants. So when you're walking around in your neighborhood and you know there's little green spaces, a lot of what you're looking at is, is really just dirt. It's for the most part, especially in urban areas, it's not really rich organic soil. Soil has lots of rich organic matter that has been broken down, but still has lots of nutrients in it. So good soil should be a little woody, it should have a fairly light texture or fluffy texture to it. Um, and it's usually also quite dark in color. So plants get nutrients from soil uh, through their roots. So soil needs to have lots of nutrients in it. If there's no nutrients in the soil, there's going to be no nutrients for the plants to grow. There's a lot more to know about plant health and nutrients, and I'll discuss that in a later video. But for now, remember to buy a few bags of potting soil that's specifically for growing vegetables in. In terms of amendments, um, I'd recommend also buying like a box or container of organic fertilizer and just again remembering to get one specifically for vegetables and it should be labeled as such or have pictures of veggies on it again. Um, if you're in a garden center, just ask for help. Let's talk a little bit quickly about plants. I'm going to go more into plant care and things like that again in a, a separate video, but Really, let's just start with thinking about you're either going to be buying seeds to grow plants or you're going to be buying seedlings, so plants that have already gotten started for you. Unless you're a total masochist, I highly recommend buying seedlings or established plants from a nursery or garden center rather than starting veggies from seed. Growing from seed isn't necessarily rocket science, you can definitely do it, but it can be tricky at first, so on the theme of trying to make things easier for yourself while you're learning, I would say probably just buy plants that are already healthy. Um, again, you can definitely try growing from seed. I would maybe recommend start with a couple of things like maybe some peas or some beans rather than trying to go from grow everything from seed and troubleshooting all of that. Um, when you're selecting seedlings, look for plants that look strong and healthy. So plants that have more leaves, uh, maybe the tallest one have plants that have a fairly girthy main stem to them. Generally speaking, if you see a, a plant and it's it's looking a little bit wilted or um, it's got a bunch of leaves or branches broken or missing, it's it it might actually survive and it might bear fruit as well. But it's not it's going to require more care and it may not grow as well as a bigger, healthier plant. So usually I'm looking for among the biggest seedlings that I can find that have a fairly girthy, strong main stem to them, um, and overall look healthy. If it's droopy, if it's brown and dried out looking, that's stay away from that. Um, those plants are marked down for a reason. Once you get used to gardening, I highly encourage you to rescue some of those guys, but keep it easy at first. 
Um, peas, carrots, and beans are a few seeds that are relatively easy to start. Everybody has their own version of what is easy, and this can be really frustrating because they usually just mean it was easy for them in their particular context. So again, I would just go to your garden center, start with some simple varieties of maybe things like um, tomatoes or peppers, maybe some herbs as well, and find some nice healthy plants to start with. In terms of tools, Honestly, a lot of garden tools really aren't necessary. Like anything, any hobby, any interest, you can spend as much money as you want. I definitely suggest investing in good tools. So spend money on some like a high quality trowel, for instance, uh, things that you're going to be using a lot. Um, a high quality pair of pruners is also a really good investment. Um, the ones I use are Felco's. I'm not sponsored by them. Felco, if you're seeing this, I would happily be sponsored by you. Um, but get get a good pair of pruners that have replacement parts that, you, that I mean, they will last you a lifetime. Uh, if you buy just a really cheap pair of pruners, you might get a season or two out of them. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, try to spend a little bit of money without going overboard. I'd also recommend getting a good larger shovel and a rake if you have a larger garden. Most other garden tools are completely superfluous and not actually needed. Uh, think of it as like kitchen appliances. There's kitchen appliances and tools for literally everything. The same is true of gardening, but unless it's something you're actually going to be using every day, even once a week, it's usually not necessary and it's just going to end up collecting dust. Um, I would say it's also a good idea, especially when you're beginning to have a little notebook to sketch out design ideas, to make notes on, especially of what you plant and when. I know this won't feel like the most important thing when you're just getting started, but you'll thank me later if you start this habit early on of just taking some simple notes, making some observations, planning ahead, and using the notebook for whatever you want to, but really starting early with writing things down and making observations. Because I guarantee you, if you stick with gardening, at some point you're going to go, well, I don't remember what I planted in April. And it can be really helpful in the following year to take a look at what you started and when, how well it did, any things that maybe didn't do so well, that can really uh, be a great habit to start forming early on in your growing journey.